Welcome to sciencecover.com. In this session, we look at velocity time graphs. The aims of this session are to be able to read a velocity time graph, to calculate the gradient from the graph, and to know what the area underneath the graph represents. Before we begin, pause the video and attempt the do now task. Let's check our answers. Number one, describe what is happening to the vehicle in each of the following distance time graphs. In A, we can see an object moving at constant speed. In B, it is a stationary object. In C, it's reversing at constant speed. And in D, we have an object decelerating. Question two. A boy walks 300 meters from his home to school. He leaves his house at 8.30 and walks 100 meters in 10 minutes. He then stops at a shop for 10 minutes to buy sweets. At 8.50, he leaves the shop and continues to school. Nine o'clock, the boy realizes he is late and still has another 100 meters to go before arriving at school. He runs the remaining 100 meters and arrives at 9.05. Use the information to sketch a distance time graph of the boy's journey to school. You can see that distance time graph displayed on the screen now. Let's learn how to read a velocity time graph. Velocity time graphs are very different to distance time graphs. Time is still found on the x-axis, however velocity is now on the y-axis. This means that a change in height represents a change in velocity. A diagonal rising line shows an increase in velocity, so this is an acceleration. A horizontal line tells us that velocity is constant, so this is constant speed. A diagonal falling line means that velocity is decreasing, so this is a deceleration. And a horizontal line along the zero velocity axis tells us that the object is not moving, so it's stationary. The gradient of the velocity time graph tells us about the acceleration of the object. A line increasing in height is something gaining in speed, whereas a line decreasing in height is something losing speed. This graph shows the journey of a car. Between zero and 10 seconds, we can see that the car's velocity is increased. So between these two points, the car is accelerating. Between 10 and 20 seconds, we have a horizontal line. This tells us that the velocity is not changing. So at this point, the car is moving at constant speed. We can also tell that that speed is 10 meters per second. Between 20 and 30 seconds, the car is stationary. This is because the velocity is zero. Between 30 and 40 seconds, the car is accelerating. We can see this velocity increasing. And between 40 and 50 seconds, we can see the velocity decreasing, which means that the car is decelerating. Pause the video now and complete task one. Let's check our answers. 
Describe the motion shown by each of these VT graphs. So A is showing an acceleration, B is showing a constant speed, C is showing a deceleration, and D is showing a stationary object. Question two. This is the velocity time graph of a sky diver after jumping out of a plane. What was the speed of the sky diver on leaving the aeroplane? This was zero meters per second. How long did it retake the sky diver to reach terminal velocity? 45 seconds. What is terminal velocity? This is where weight is equal to drag. At which time does the sky diver open its parachute? This is at 90 seconds. What is the speed of the skydiver when he hits the ground at 150 seconds? That is 100 meters per second. Let's now look at how we can calculate the gradient of a graph. The gradient of a velocity time graph tells us the acceleration. As we have velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, when we work out the gradient, we do a change in the y-axis divided by the change in the x-axis. This is a change in velocity divided by a change in time, which is equal to acceleration. Therefore, the gradient is equal to acceleration. We know that an accelerating object, we see an increase in line, and for a decelerating object, We'll see a decreasing line. Let's look at how we can calculate the acceleration. First, pick two points on the line and turn these points into a right angle triangle. Then measure the height of the triangle and measure the width of the triangle. The gradient is equal to the change in height divided by the change in width. That's 40 divided by 15, which is equal to 2.6. Since the y-axis has the units meters per second and we're dividing by the x-axis, which has the units seconds, the units are meters per second per second or meters per second squared. To calculate a deceleration, we use the same trick. Pick two points on the line and turn them into a right angle triangle. Now measure the height of the triangle and measure the width of the triangle. Since this line is decreasing, we're going to call the height minus 40. To calculate the gradient, we take the change in the height divided by the change in the width. So this is minus 40 divided by 15. This is equal to minus 2.6 meters per second squared. Pause the video now and complete task two. Let's check our answers. The acceleration of a section A is 1 meter per second squared. The acceleration of a section B is 0 meters per second squared. And the acceleration of a section C is minus 2 meters per second squared. Let's now focus on the area underneath the graph. The area underneath a velocity time graph tells us the distance that that object has covered. In graph A, we can see an accelerating object. The area underneath the line creates the shape of a triangle. So to work out the area of a triangle, we use the formula area equals half the base times the height. 
This is half 5 times 20, which is half of 100, which equals 50. So the distance covered by the object in A is 50 meters. In graph B, we can see the velocity is constant. The shape created by the area underneath the graph is a rectangle. To work out the area of a rectangle, we must multiply the base by the height. So that is 10 times 10, which is equal to 100. So the distance covered by object B is 100 meters. Graph C shows a decelerating object, and again we can see the shape of the area underneath the graph is a triangle. So to work out the area of a triangle, we do half multiplied by the base times the height. This is half 10 times 10, which is equal to half of 100. So graph C covers a distance of 50 meters. Some graphs are more complex, but we can work out the area underneath the graph by splitting it into shapes. This graph can be split into three different sections. We have two triangular sections and a rectangular section. To work out the area of triangle A, we need to do half the base times the height. So this is half times 20 times 20, which is equal to 200 meters. For rectangle B, the area is the base multiplied by the height. That's 20 multiplied by 20, which gives us an area of 400 meters. For triangle C, the area is half the base times the height. This is half 10 times 20, which is equal to 150 meters. So if we want to calculate the distance traveled by the object shown on this graph, we now need to add these three areas together. So the total distance must be 200 plus 400 plus 150. And this is equal to 750 meters. Pause the video now and complete task three. Let's check the answers to task three. What information does the area underneath the graph tell us about a journey? It tells us the distance traveled. Describe the motion of the motorbike during section B. It's traveling at constant velocity. Calculate the area underneath the graph in sections A, should have been 150 meters, B, 300 meters, and C, 75 meters. What is the total distance as the motorbike has moved? 525 meters.